Boomer like a boomer like a bo chow chow chow. Bow bow wow wow. Chink like chink like a chow chow chow. Who are we? We are Esai. Can't you see? <laughs> It opened in a neighborhood that was ethnically diverse. Uh, every neighborhood, every street had an ethnic group that settled in to a person. Uh, there were always immigrants. There were always non-speaking children who had to learn the language, who were always battling to learn English uh, and get good grades at the same time. The second thing is that it was a very village kind of atmosphere. You know, they say it takes a village to raise a child. This was, all, at least in the old days, uh, a very village-oriented neighborhood. Uh, I could tell you, back in times past, where people lived, who their aunts, uncles, cousins were, because it was that stable. Uh, everybody knew everybody. I just walked in and knew Mr. Campbell's, or Mr. Oliveira's grandmother, and it's that type of neighborhood. And I, you know, I could tell you where they lived and how, that type of thing. So I would say those are the two very, very strong things. There's always strongly ethnic uh, immigrants like the Cubans came in. We always took, you know, groups that were uh, seeking refuge. Uh, so it was always, always, in my teaching experience, there were always immigrants that I was, I was working with. The, we went from the Cubans to the Portuguese, uh, South Americans after that. So. I think that's what makes this school very different. Oh, well, you didn't have to go out of the arm bound. They had everything. You go to the corner. I lived on East Kinney Street off of Jefferson. You went, you went to the, uh, my house was about two, three houses in. You go out to Jefferson Street. That one block had a butcher, a barber shop. You had a fish market. You had a, a cleaners. You had a candy store. Just that one block, and a bakery, like crossover, and a hardware store. All in that one block, East Kinney to Nickel Street. On my block, there was Italians, um, Germans, Irish, Polish, Syrian, um, all different. Of course, you want other, maybe other streets had maybe more Italians, you know, but East Side, as you know, was populated by Italians, Polish, Irish, and we all got together. During the years I was here, and 40 years is a pretty good time, uh, you had the influx of the Portuguese, uh, but also a European culture that uh, they wanted to work, they wanted their kids to come to Eastside. One of the things that was true of other high schools but has remained true about Eastside is that Eastside is very much an integral part of its community and the community is an integral part of Eastside. Eastside and the Ironbound grew up together to a great extent. Uh, the Ironbound has not been a fixed community and perhaps that makes the Ironbound different. I remember the first day I walked into Eastside. It was just some amazing with all the diversity I've seen in front of the building. I got into the building and uh, I saw people all around the world. I, I couldn't, I was not expecting it because I, when I was coming, I seen the building was a little bit old. It's just when I got into the building, I seen all these different people with different backgrounds and everybody's willing to talk to you, ask you, 
questions. And at, at first I was a little bit um, nervous. I didn't know, because I, ne I was never introduced to those type of um, lifestyle. I started in an ESL class, first level ESL. Next year, after you know being able to progress, I, I went straight into honors, second level of honors English. Uh, and I know that's due to the fact that, uh, you know, Ms. Marinello made a decision that I could go with it, even though, you know, it's probably a challenge, more of a challenge to, than it could be probably to other students who started off with the first, first regular English level. Uh, but that allowed me to sort of just adjust and like just work harder. In contrast, the Ironbound has evolved. My mother, who grew up in the Ironbound, would talk about how when she was growing up in the Ironbound in the teens and in the 20s, there was a growing Portuguese and Spanish community. There were the well-established Irish and German and Polish communities. Even in my career as an educator here at Eastside, uh, when I first started in 1974, we had a very, very strong bilingual program that was almost exclusively Portuguese. And then we saw that evolve with a much a declining Portuguese community and a growing Brazilian community. And then an evolving and growing South American community. So the Ironbound has changed over the years. But it has changed in a gradual way so that even though you would get the dynamic tension of different groups, everybody felt they were part of the Ironbound. In the same way, Eastside has reflected that. Eastside is the one high school in Newark that's never really had a dominant community. It's had a very diverse community. And God forbid you tell any of those individuals anything negative about Eastside, they will all then unify because everybody feels that Eastside is theirs. It was uh, an eye-opening thing for me. And I'll tell you why, I went to Catholic school and you only met Catholics. And in those days, really, you never mixed with anybody. Uh, and I'm gonna divert here. My sister, who came four years after me here, came home from school. She's really a much better example than I am, I think of that. And said to my mother, Mom, I met a Protestant. Never in her life did she ever speak to anybody that wasn't a Catholic. So when we got here, you began to, your world opened up. You met different religions, you met other ethnic groups, because as I said, if you lived on a, in a neighborhood, you met only people of your ethnic group, basically. You didn't uh, meet the Italians because you lived in the Polish neighborhood. So uh, it just opened the world to many, many different kinds of foods because you'd go to your friend's house and now you're eating something that you never ate before. Like myself, we were um, second generation and the 1950s, we were really second generation um, Americans already at that point. And uh, it was in the 1960s, really began with Cuba, that you began to get people from outside the, um, the country. So mine was a little bit different because we were uh, all English speaking. Rarely did you have somebody who didn't speak the language that wasn't born here. But we were all products of immigrant grandparents. The diversity is very, very uh, obvious um, to anybody who has been here. It's not easy, but it's very obvious if you just look around. When I came in here in 1962, it was Italian and Polish. Uh, how it's different than schools in Poland. Uh... Well, one thing is definitely it's more diverse. I mean, I've never seen so many different kinds of people uh, go to one school, and it's such a large school, too. Eastside High School, to me, has always been a situation where you meet people from all over the world, different countries, Portugal, Spain, um, United States, what have you. And it's always been a situation where you get a chance to learn about people, and you also learn about yourself at the same time. And 85 was as diverse as it is today. We had a lot of, obviously there were a lot more Portuguese students in the, in the school than there are now, but we had a lot of different uh, ethnic groups represented here at Eastside High School. So there were a lot of different cultures. Uh, predominantly it was Brazilian and Portuguese when I was here, but you had all the other uh, South American and Central American uh, countries represented. 
and you had Asia and because obviously Europe was here, you know, European countries were represented here too. I believe in my classroom, everyone is from another country. So that's a big, that's a very big diversity. And uh, the, the classmates are just, work, are, they welcome everyone. No matter where you're from, how you, what, what you believe, or what you know or not, they always welcome you, they are always there to help. I personally always ask some kids from other countries and to find out about their lifestyle. They all, it's, it's a whole different lifestyle from other people. And just having those type of classmates inspires me and just teach me lessons every single day. You would climb the stairs and you would enter the front door and to the left was the main office, to the right was the library, and then across from there was the auditorium. We were very confused. We didn't know because we were changing. We didn't do that in grammar school, change classes. And you had only like, a, I think, three minutes to get to your next class, rushing in the halls, rushing. Yeah, it was, it was nice. Back then, the junior prom was in the gym. You did not go outside for the junior prom. But you would set up a committee and you would come up with a theme and you would totally change the gym based on your theme with all your decorations and everything. Uh, and then planning for activities like your senior prom and uh, the senior picnic. Some of which, again, you think were something every high school student goes through and then when you begin talking to students from who went to other schools you realize some of the things like the annual senior picnic that we had back then uh, did not exist for everybody again things that would bring you together now these things of course cost money so therefore we also had tons of fundraisers i remember all the cookie sales and the book sales and the magazine sales that we would all work on there were loads of dances on a very regular basis. We used to have many, 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 many dances. So there was, this was a social hub without fights, without you know, any kind of friction. Uh, this was a very good place for a social kind of activity. And when I went to my prom, it was held in the gym. And the gym was all decorated, it was really nice. And lunchtime was very nice because you could bring your lunch to school and go eat it across the street in the park. It was really nice. The teachers that have left have been the greatest, the greatest in a school. They were, they dress beautifully. Uh, and the kids dress, when I started, the kids dress was wonderful. The boys wore white on white shirts with cufflinks and, and beautiful slacks and, and the girls wore beautiful skirts and, and it, was, it was just wonderful just to see came graduation, it was, it was a delight. When I say that I did West Side Story three times, I, in 10 years, in every 10 years I did West Side Story with a different cast and they were never, never the same. They were always different. Uh, dancers were different, uh, uh, but voices were the same. And as a result, the kids had the same thrill in doing it. Some things you don't realize when you're a student. Three of my teachers at Eastside had, were college professors who had PhDs. When I was a freshman in Eastside, I had freshman algebra one with Dr. Harry Lewis. And the textbook we were using was like mimeographed sheets, which was kind of different, we, you know, but we dealt with it. It was on mimeographed sheets because it was Harry Lewis's textbook. Harry Lewis wrote the algebra one and algebra two textbook that was used in 80% of the high schools in the United States. And 
he was coming out with a new version and that's why we had it on mimeograph sheets because we were he was editing it with us as we were learning as far as being a teacher went it was a blessing to be here the kids were respectful the parents were even more respectful the parents wanted you to do a job and if they saw you were doing a job they they loved you i mean you look at i was here 40 years uh, I used to joke one of, the year, one of the reasons I retired, I didn't mind it when a student came in and said, my mother says to say hello, she had you back. That didn't bother me. But then in the 90s when kids came in and said, my grandmother says to say, I said, I think it's time to retire. It, re it really was. I taught hundreds of students here at Eastside in the time that I was teaching here and the best part of it was that the students were friendly, were aware of the fact that I was the teacher and they were my students, but we had a wonderful rapport. Singing is possibly one of the few classes that you can have where you have the full attention of everybody sitting in that room for you, for the teacher. And um, the beautiful part of it was that no matter wherever I meet people from Eastside, they remember, they loved it, and they loved what we did. And you know, you don't realize that uh, working with students, children, um, they have a wonderful memory, but they remember the good, too, really very well. The first coming back to Newark at all was intriguing. I had just finished two years in the service and gotten my master's degree, and I decided I really wanted to teach, and I applied for a teaching position in Newark. She said, well, I reviewed your resume and I had no idea why a person with your background would want to come and teach in Newark, which hurt and got me very angry. I said, this is my city, this is my home. This is where I want to teach. I didn't regret it. I was very pleased and it was to me very fortuitous because you only apply obviously to, to work in Newark. And the fact that I got placed right back home, right back in Eastside was really just wonderful. My teachers were here, and they were um, the old-fashioned type. You know, they were really with the tied-up shoes and the long black dresses, and they'd been here really a very, very long time. But every single one of them was a supportive. I had more wings that were wrapped around me, and I think that made all the difference. I really do. Uh, every little hint about make sure you're in class on time. Uh, make sure your students don't walk in late because people will say you have no control. It was all those little old-fashioned things though that really got me through and they would help in any way. So I would say probably my success was the fact that I did come back where people knew me and, and really took care of me. Even when I went for my uh, oral exam, the um, uh, chairman all got together, as a matter of fact right upstairs in that balcony area up there, and they did a simulated oral exam and took me through so that when I went I would be comfortable. That's how good they were. I mean these were people who uh, really were very caring. The school at that particular time was reflecting the 70, the fashions, the music, the way people acted, the way people responded and so forth. Uh, you had a situation during that particular time of uh, of course the Star Wars, the disco era, I'm not going to say it's changed, the colors have changed. Uh, I think the big thing that has changed, as I went running up the stairs, I started breathing heavy as I got to the third floor. Uh, I think that's a big change in the school, or maybe that's a big change <laughs> in me. I think we're going to continue this tradition and um, you know, bring Eastside to a great, to make it a great school, not just in Newark, not just in the state, but throughout the country. That's the goal, that's the vision. Eastside High School prepared me for Princeton University. Uh, I had no, or the experience of Eastside High School, that everything together. Anybody who comes to Eastside, they're gonna feel like it's home. 
like they're gonna get the support that they need and they're gonna be um, amazed here. We had pride, we cared, we had a dedicated staff, and I think that is still very true. As the principal of Eastside High School and, and, and it's 100th anniversary, so um, I'm humbled, I'm honored. A school isn't just walls and bricks and classrooms. A school is um, people inside of it, students. Students that's working hard and willing to be successful in life. Once an East Sider, always an East Sider. And it's a phrase that should be all over the school. Once an East Sider, always an East Sider. Once an East Sider, always, always an East Sider. Once an East Sider, 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 always an East Sider. I will take that also. Once an East Side teacher, always an East Side teacher. Once an East Sider, always an East Sider. Yay, East Side. <laughs>